it's a great pleasure for me to join the Chair of the General Assembly in extending a very warm welcome to all delegations to the 2019 Assemblies. Uh, I thank all delegations for their presence here uh, and for their continuing commitment to an engagement in and support of uh, the organisation. As the Chair has mentioned, we have a very full agenda, both the formal agenda and the professional and social events that member states and other interested parties have been kind enough to organise on the margins of the assemblies. <coughs> Please allow me at the outset to thank uh, the Chair of the General As uh, Assembly, Ambassador Zung, for his dedication and hard work over the past two years uh, <coughs> and for his efforts to shepherd towards a, a resolution a number of items that are on our agenda. Equally, I should like to extend our thanks to the chair of the out, outgoing chair of the Coordination Committee, Ambassador Ismail Bagai Hamane of uh, Iran, as well as the many chairs of the committees and working groups uh, of the organization for their tremendous uh, efforts in taking the work of the organization forward. Now, it's a pleasure for me to report uh, very briefly on a few words on the state of uh, intellectual property worldwide and then on uh, the organization and the performance of the organization in that context. Uh, worldwide, I think, as we can all observe, there has never before been such interest in and attention to uh, intellectual property. Uh, this is not a sudden development. It has been unfolding at an increasing rhythm uh, over the past years, and in particular the past decade, and it's a consequence, as we all are aware, of profound and rapidly developing technological change uh, that is giving greater emphasis to intangible assets and to intellectual capital. Uh, now, the increased uh, prominence of intellectual property brings with it uh, new challenges, both for intellectual property uh, and for the organization. One of those challenges, which affects all national uh, and regional offices, uh, is the management of the growing demand for intellectual property titles uh, in a way that ensures a timely and high quality response and, and decision making uh, in the administration of intellectual property applications. In 2017, and we will shortly release the figures for 2018, but in 2017 worldwide, there were 3.2 million patent applications, 12.4 million trademark applications, and 1.2 million design applications. So this is an extraordinary number. Uh, and the number of those applications at the national and regional level that have been translated into international applications under our global IP systems uh, is likewise increasing rapidly, as I shall mention in one moment. Uh, now, it's clear, I think, that uh, those, that level of application, the number of applications, is stretching our capacity as human beings, and it's clear that we are going to need new tools in order to manage this uh, extraordinary volume. And here, artificial intelligence is coming to our rescue. Uh, and the organization has been, I think, as you are aware, at the forefront of the development and deployment of new artificial intelligence applications uh, for this purpose, for the purpose of management of intellectual property applications through uh, our Advanced Technologies Application Center. Uh, and the applications that have been developed in this regard include WIPO Translate, which is licensed free of charge to 11 UN uh, uh, and other international bodies and entities, a world first brand image search system, and a number of classification tools. Uh, other applications are under development, and we have developed also uh, as you are aware, I think, a new and improved system for the management of records of meetings in the future uh, that features on the agenda of this, uh, these assemblies. Uh, it will deliver a very much improved service, we believe, at a considerably lower cost, uh, and widespread interest in its adoption has been expressed already by a number of other UN and international bodies. 
Uh, all of these applications will be or have been shared with member states and I hope that as an international community we can work together <coughs> for the development and deployment of these useful applications in a way that does not duplicate each other's work. Now, the increasing uh, importance of the position of um, intellectual property also has also resulted in a number of new challenges of, on substance uh, for intellectual property, as we all know. And new technologies, again, such as artificial intelligence, are raising new questions, I think, for uh, uh, the application of existing IP policy, as well as the very major question of whether the classical intellectual property system, which is designed in very different circumstances, is serving well uh, the innovation needs of the digital uh, economy. Uh, in this respect, I'm delighted that the organization has started a, at least a conversation about uh, these issues which took place um, on Friday of last week. We have been engaged also as a secretariat with a number of different member states uh, in joint activities in, in uh, these areas. And I think uh, we are getting to the stage where we can see a process going forward uh, for the identification of the issues that are important in the intellectual property field uh, in this very um, challenging area uh, of a new general purpose technology in the form of artificial uh, intelligence. Now, uh, of course, this conversation on intellectual property and artificial intelligence is taking place at a time when the multilateral system is under a, number, a large number of pressures uh, that are impairing its capacity to deliver timely results in the normative area. Uh, and not the least of those challenges is a faltering political will to adopt the multilateral approach to uh, questions of a policy nature that are arising. Uh, if I may, uh, I would like to signal or at least mention that we should also consider the consequences of failure in this regard or of neglect of the multilateral approach for these questions. And those consequences include, of course, incoherence in the regulatory framework that applies to technologies that are inherently international in their application, inherently international in their deployment, and a race through regulatory competition to establish the global rule or solution uh, is likely to produce uh, a considerable amount of or the possibility of incoherence. Uh, and to impair the social and economic be benefit of these technologies. I think that technical interoperability, which, upon which all of these technologies depend, it depends in turn on regulatory interoperability, uh, and that uh, is the space for multilateralism. Uh, now, if I may, <coughs> let me turn briefly to the results of the organization over the past year, and I think here we see that the organization has been, for the most part, a beneficiary of the increased interest in intellectual property. So the financial situation of the organization is, um, is, is very sound and is very stable. We ended last year, 2018, with a surplus of 42.5 million Swiss francs. At this stage of the year in 2019, we are expecting, again, a healthy surplus uh, in the financial results for the year. Uh, these surpluses are, if I may say, very important for the financial operation of this organization because the surpluses are used to undertake capital projects approved by you, the member states, pursuant to the capital master plan. These capital projects mainly relate to information technology systems, investment, to premises, building, uh, the building infrastructure, uh, and to the financing of long-term liabilities, such as after uh, service health insurance, the funding of those liabilities, um, as, as well as ensuring that there is a sufficient <coughs> level of liquid reserves to guard against any vulnerability that the organisation has as a consequence of mar uh, sharp market downturns 
uh, since the bulk of the uh, revenue of the organisation is coming from services de delivered direct to the market. Uh, now, our global systems continue to develop in a very positive manner. Uh, the systems are used by all the major corporations in the world, as well as by research and scientific institutions and small and medium enterprises, as well as individuals. The Patent Cooperation Treaty last year received 253,000 uh, international patent applications. That was a growth rate of 3.9% over the preceding year. The Madrid system for trademarks received 61,200 international trademark applications. That was a growth rate of 6.4% over the preceding year. Uh, and the Hague system received 5,400-odd <coughs> international applications, again a growth rate of 3.3% over the preceding year. So each of those systems, I think, is expanding its geographical reach and uh, in experiencing uh, healthy increases in demand. In terms of uh, the geographical coverage of the systems, let me signal in particular the developments in, the, in, in respect of the Madrid system. We've had over the past 12 months five new accessions to the Madrid system from Afghanistan, Brazil, Canada, Malawi and Samoa. Uh, Brazil's accession means that the two largest economies in Latin America are now part of the Madrid system and I hope that this uh, uh, encourages other countries in the Latin American region, which is trailed a little in its participation in the Madrid system, to join the system. The WIPO Arbitration and Mediation Center, please allow me to mention this, I think it's had extremely good results uh, in the course of recent years. Uh, it's experiencing significant growth. In terms of internet domain name disputes, last year some 3,500 internet domain name disputes were received, which was an increase of 12% over the preceding year. And it also receives a regular uh, and solid caseload for arbitrations, mediations and expert determinations more generally in the field of intellectual property, not confined to internet domain name disputes. Uh, we also cooperate through the centre with 20 intellectual property officers and copyright officers worldwide in the administration of various forms of uh, alternative dispute resolution procedures um, at the national level. Uh, there are two important developments underway, new developments underway in the centre that I should like to signal uh, to you. The first is the accreditation of the centre by the Cyberspace Administration of China as a service provider for internet domain name disputes in .cn. .cn is one of the largest country domains uh, in the world and the addition of .cn to, this portf to our portfolio means that the uh, organisation or the Arbitration and Mediation Centre will be administering uh, disputes or is administering disputes, internet domain name disputes, in 75 country code domains, which is a very significant coverage. Uh, secondly, uh, we have received, the centre has received uh, positive encouragement uh, to become a dispute resolution provider in the, chi in the China Shanghai uh, pilot free trade zone which hosts some 10,000 foreign invested enterprises. Uh, the centre would be the first non-Chinese entity providing alternative dispute resolution services for the zone. Uh, and both of these developments, I think, if I may say, are very positive developments for foreign enterprises participating in the Chinese markets because it gives them an additional choice of an independent and neutral uh, service for dispute resolution. So I should like to express our deep appreciation to the relevant Chinese authorities for their expression of confidence in the centre and for their commitment to international cooperation. Uh, we have funded, uh, we have launched rather, a new global IP portal. I would like to uh, signal that to you. It will be demonstrated throughout the week. It has gone live. Uh, it seeks, it's a technical development, but it's a very important one, it seeks to integrate our different IT systems underlying our global IP systems so as to give a uniform customer experience across all of the systems. Uh, many users of our systems use multiple systems and having a uniform interface 
uh, and a uniform login, a uniform uh, security uh, system, uniform identity management system, all of these things uh, should uh, increase the attractiveness of the service of our global systems. The past year has also been a record year for accessions to WIPO administered treaties. We have uh, 59 such accessions in the course of 2018 and 2019 has been also a very strong uh, year and I think this is another positive sign for multilateralism. Uh, we're expecting a number of important accessions this week um, and I'm also very pleased to report that we're getting very close, very close to the numbers of accessions required for the entry into force of the Geneva Act of the Lisbon Agreement on Appellations of Origin and Geographical Indications and the Beijing Treaty on Audiovisual Performances. And we hope that both of these instruments will enter into force before the end of 2019. Uh, look, there have been a number of other positive developments. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I do want to do some justice to uh, the work of uh, my colleagues in particular within the organization and the cooperation uh, that uh, all of the member states have given to this organization. So allow me please just to very briefly mention uh, uh, several of uh, <coughs> the services um, that are um, detailed uh, in my written report, which uh, will give you much more information on uh, all of these services. Uh, so, our databases and IT platforms, you know, this is technical cooperation, and this is a very important area, even if a technical er area. They are attracting an increasingly wide uh, participation, and they have become a very important basis of our technical assistance. For example, our intellectual property uh, administration IT suite of modules uh, is used in now 84 countries. Uh, over 750 technology and innovation support centers have been established in 79 countries. Uh, free or low cost access to scientific, medical and technical uh, publications is offered to thousands of users in developing and least developed countries thanks to the cooperation of scientific, the, the scientific, medical and technical publishers and commercial database vendors. Uh, the WIPO Academy is thriving. Over 90,000 uh, participants in our distance learning uh, programs last year across the world. Uh, our public-private partnerships are growing in strength, in particular WIPO Research and the Accessible Books Consortium. Allow me to dwell for one little moment on the Accessible Books Consortium, which operates in conjunction with the Marrakesh uh, Treaty. Uh, it now has a repertoire of over 500,000 works in 76 languages in accessible formats for exchange uh, for the benefit of blind and visually impaired persons across the world. Additionally, our flagship reports um, in economics and statistics uh, and technology, including our Global Innovation uh, Index, are attracting global audiences. And we've had a number of successful projects for, in the area of appropriate technology for the least developed countries. All of these programs that I've mentioned very briefly are examples of the mainstreaming of development, which is one of the objectives of the development agenda across the organization, and of active support in numerous ways for the sustainable development goals. Turning now to the uh, agenda for <coughs> uh, this week, please allow me to mention four specific items briefly. The first is the draft, draft program budget. Uh, I'm grateful to the Program Budget Committee for its positive recommendations for approval. Uh, only one item, as you are aware, the allocation of common expenses among the unions <coughs> remains outstanding. There are two proposals on the table for the resolution of uh, that item. The amount of money in question is trivial. Um, I urge the Member States to find a pragmatic solution for this long-standing difference and to approve the program budget so as to ensure stability in a period of transition for the organization. <clears throat> Second item I should like to mention is the proposed design law treaty. <clears throat> now, uh, if I may say, 
I see no reason why this should not go to a diplomatic conference. It has been ready, really, for several years. There are two items outstanding, of course, uh, but I'm sure they can be resolved. If they can't be resolved this week, uh, they can be resolved at the diplomatic conference. And I think that the continued delay in completing this exercise it's an unwarranted, unwanted sign of a lack of capacity of the organisation in the normative area at a time when, as I mentioned earlier, we have some really fundamental uh, issues to confront as an organisation in the area of new technologies. Um, the third item that I will mention briefly, I have already mentioned, so I won't dwell on it, is the management of uh, records of meetings. We will demonstrate that, but I would like to urge you to uh, approve this. Um, it's been very positively received in our consultations, but to approve it as a demonstration, the organisation also can innovate in the true sense of the word. Uh, and finally, uh, we have uh, the a proposed introduction of a digital time stamping service and I thank the member states for their positive response to this proposal in the program and budget committee. The introduction of that service will be a very small step towards providing intellectual property services that are appropriate for the digital economy. Uh, let me thank all of the staff of the organisation for their dedicated professionalism. Our productivity continues to improve and increases in staff costs continue to be uh, contained. Uh, overall, the organisation is well down the track in that its digital transformation, both in terms of our working and management systems and in terms of the services that we offer uh, to the public. Uh, we've asked quite a lot of the staff in this process of digital transformation uh, and they've, ex they've responded extremely well. And I'm deeply appreciative of their positive attitude to the rather constant change that the contemporary world uh, is demanding. Geographical and gender diversity remain priorities. We have improved in geographical diversity, which is a long process, um, given that we have a low rate of attrition amongst the staff. <clears throat> but now we have 123 nationalities represented uh, on the staff. We do need to make further progress on gender diversity in the upper ranks of the organisation and our eye is firmly fixed on achieving this. So I thank uh, all Member States once again for their very positive uh, engagement in and support for the organisation and I wish you all very successful deliberations and positive outcomes to those deliberations. Thank you.